Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Paul Adams, who's the CEO of EverEdge Global. EverEdge Global is an intangible asset specialist advisory service. And Paul joins us today to discuss the concept of data valuation and monetization and why they're so crucial to enhancing growth opportunities. Thanks for coming along, Paul, and welcome to the jam. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Fantastic. So just to start off, can you tell us a little bit about EverEdge and what you guys do? Sure. So as mentioned, we are an intangible asset specialist. So basically that means we deal with all of the assets in a business that you can't drop on your foot. So those are things like data, brands, content, trade secrets, confidential information, regulatory approvals, networks and customer and supplier relationships, that kind of thing. So we've been around for about 14 years. We've completed over 2,000 client engagements. Uh, we started life here in New Zealand, um, but actually we've now expanded. Most of our activity is based in our offshore offices in Singapore, uh, Sydney, Charlotte, and North Carolina, and here in Auckland. Um, our net promoter score is very strong. It's plus 74%. I think the benchmark for management consulting is minus 22. So we're reasonably happy with uh, being at plus 74%. It's equivalent to about a 9.44 out of 10 for customer satisfaction. Um, return on client fees, very strong. It's typically in excess of 10x. What that really means is that for every dollar a client gives us, we're able to give them at least $10 in value back. And we've been ranked amongst the top IP strategists globally for the last nine years consecutively. And nobody else in Asia Pacific ever has achieved that track record um, of credibility. Um, clients range everywhere from the very largest companies, so Fortune 100, all the way down to startups and so forth. Um, and we do sort of five key things. We either work with a company or its investors, and we do uh, these five key steps of number one, say, look, what are your intangible assets? Number two, are they strong or are they weak? How are you protecting them? Number three, strategy is really all about saying, how can you protect these intangible assets more effectively? And then how can you make money from them? Once you've figured out how to make money from them, then you can value them. So about half of our business is in the valuation of intangible assets. And then that finally leads you into monetization, which is where we help our clients to make money from their intangible assets. So that's us. So just expanding on that, how can intangible assets such as data contribute to an increased valuation? Yes, that's a really good question. So allow me to share my screen. And what I'll do is explain a little how that works. So if we go back to 1975, Intangible assets accounted for barely 17% of all company value. If you fast forward today, it's about 90%, right? So, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about big companies or small ones. Big companies are about 98% intangible. Most startups, technology companies are even more so. They're almost entirely intangible. And these intangible assets are everywhere. So, they're not just in the traditional things like patents and trademarks, but they're in you know, regulatory approvals, systems and processes, software code, networks and relationships, and of course, what we're talking about, data. And what's really interesting is that these assets are now the primary drivers of virtually all company performance. In other words, if you want to see where companies are generating their earnings growth from and their growth in general, it's almost universally out of their intangible assets rather than their tangible ones. And there's a really simple thought experiment you can do to prove that. So imagine a very fixed asset, physical asset intensive industry, like a steel mill. Now let's pretend that I gave you a free steel mill. So here you go, have a free steel mill. The catch is you don't get to keep any of the intangible assets, right? So I get to hold on to all of the software that runs the mill, all of the industrial know-how, all of the regulatory approvals that I to run the mill, all of the customer and supplier relationships, all of the data, et cetera. Well, what becomes apparent very quickly is regardless of what your accountant tells you, the real value in the mill is the ability to run it safely and efficiently. And, and so that the mill is no longer, the mill itself, the physical mill is not an asset, it's actually a liability. The real value in the mill is all of those intangible assets, including things like data. So intangible assets basically now are the things that differentiate companies and a company's source of competitive advantage and where they generate all the earnings growth from. Does that make sense? Yeah, fantastic. And how can companies unlock value and drive um, to increase performance from data? Yeah, absolutely. So what you find is that there are really fundamentally two ways that a company can um, unlock value in their data. The first is through internal operational improvements and so forth and efficiencies so that they figure out ways of utilizing their data to run more efficiently, to price more effectively, a whole lot of things that are effectively internal to them to sell more products, to target their customers more effectively, all of those kind of things. So that's one way. And that's the most common way, right? The second way 
is when companies recognize that actually their, val their data can also be valuable to external parties, right? Where those external parties might value that data more than they might value it themselves, right? And so what I wanna do is I'll, I'll give you an example of precisely what I'm talking about with that. So um, uh, we had a client who had, um, uh, you know, they're running a business, it was in the financial services industry and they were being sold. And the investment bank managing the transaction did the classic investment banking thing, said, you know, this is what your company is, this is what its EBIT is, we multiply it through an industry standard multiplier, which in this case was four, that's what you're worth. And we looked at what these guys are doing and went, well, hold on, the most valuable asset in this business is its data. And that data is off balance sheet and nobody's even talking about it in the sales process. So we took over that sales process and we did two things very differently. We said, look, number one, we really need to talk about the data because what had happened is they'd collected a whole bunch of data for their own purposes and were using it in their own business but it actually had enormous value to external parties, more so in fact, than to the company itself. So first of all, we had to talk about the data because they just saw it as a tool or an implement they use. They didn't recognize that it had this external value as well. And secondly, not only did we really talk about data, but we targeted people who wanted to buy data, not who wanted to buy the operating business. In other words, there are a bunch of people who looked at this business just like any other ordinary business and, and they saw it on its financial performance. But there were also a bunch of people out there who would fundamentally say, actually, the reason I want to buy this business is not because of the business itself, but because of its data. And we ended up actually selling that business to one of those players for 32 times EBITDA. Right? So instead, we got the owner for every dollar they were expecting to get for that business, they got $8 instead, right? It was the difference between a really good result and generational wealth for that owner. And so that really highlights how businesses can unlock value and data. And fundamentally, it comes down to can you utilize it internally for your own purposes? Or is there somebody else out there who might you think it, it might actually value it even more than you do? Yeah, and how can companies switch the conversation from being viewed as a cost, data being viewed as cost center to an asset that can actually be utilized? So I, th I think the first thing is that you need to identify um, what data you actually have, right? It, it's not enough to simply say, oh, we've got some data, right? So you've actually got to identify that data and um, understand its strengths and its weaknesses. And, and that really brings us to the second point is that once you've identified the data that you have, you need to understand how and to whom it could be valuable, right? Which is really about saying, okay, so what is the business model that you can utilize to extract value from that data, right? So first step, understand what data you have. Second, second step, how could you use that data to generate value and to whom could it be potentially value, valuable? And then the third point is really then to understand the return on investment. So, and what I mean by that is that any data monetization exercise is gonna have costs associated with it and risk, right? So you, there's nothing you can do in business that doesn't have a cost or risk associated with it. And data monetization is not free. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time somebody came to me and said, look, we've got all this data, we must be able to do something with it. But they don't take into account the fact that there are costs and risk associated with that as well. So you need to actually calculate out the return on investment. And by that, I mean, you need to actually go through the process of just like you would with any other physical asset, right? So imagine for a moment that somebody gave you an empty lot of land and they said, you know, you, you discovered it on your balance sheet, for example. And there might be lots of different things you can do with that lot of land, right? You might be able to turn it into residential apartments. You could just sell it outright. You could put an industrial zone block, uh, you know, thing on it. You could put a commercial office block on it. Well, you wouldn't just choose the first one. Right? You would go through the process of figuring out, okay, so how big is the land? Um, what are its dimensions, et cetera? What is it zoned for? What could you do with it? How much would it cost to build a residential block? How much would you be able to sell it for versus an industrial? You would go through a process, right? Well, exactly the same discipline applies to data monetization. If you suddenly discover you have a whole lot of data or you suspect you may have a whole lot of data, you don't do what many companies do, which is just simply charge out and try to monetize it you actually need to sit back and say, hold on, let's go through the same discipline we would with any other asset, right? Let's understand what the asset is. Let's understand how we can use it. Let's understand the business models by which we could extract value from it. 
And then we are in a position to be able to actually have a proper apples to apples comparison and look at, okay, we can go down this path of monetization, we're gonna get this much money. If we go down this path of monetization, we're gonna get this much money. The, we understand the risks, we understand the risk adjusted returns, et cetera, from doing those different things. The fact data at the end of the day is just like any other asset. It has a different format and behaves somewhat differently. But the economic principles remain the same. It's about business cases. It's about understanding what it's worth prior to committing economic resources to it. Awesome. And just to finish off, on the broader scheme of things, what are the technical, legal, and reputational risks um, companies need to kind of navigate in relation to this kind of data? Sure. So the first thing is, you're quite right. There are technical issues associated with data monetization. And this is where most people tend to focus all their attention, right? So they get hung up on the architecture of the data, or is the data like big enough, or what does it contain, et cetera. And they'll address issues like currency, relevancy, accuracy, consistency, completeness, all of those kind of things. And those things are really important because if the data isn't technically in a good state, it's very difficult to monetize. The things that people actually tend to forget about, however, is they don't look at two other really important factors. The first of those are legal. Well, then that addresses issues like, well, are you allowed to even use that data, right? Did you collect it for the right purpose? You might have collected it for reasons A, B, and C, but if you're now using it for X, Y, and Z, you may not be able to do that. Do you even own the data? Uh, a lot of companies we see don't actually even own the data. They think they do, but they don't. And then there are what we call reputational risks. So it might be perfectly technically possible to do something with that data. It might be perfectly legal to do that, something with that data, but should you do it? What will your customers say when they find out that you've used what they consider to be their data in that particular way? So there are reputational and moral issues that arise from that as well that may more than offset any benefit you gain from the monetization. So it's not as simple as simply saying, okay, well, I've got this data and it must be worth something and I've got to do something with it. There, you have to go through that discipline process of essentially building a business case to understand what, what's going on. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that awesome advice, uh, Paul, and we look forward to hearing more from Everage in the future. Pleasure.